Welcome to this practice series on altered harmony and upper structure triads. From studying this course, you will have come across the upper structure triad cheat sheet. Here it is. This cheat sheet shows the four most common upper structure formulas that we should be familiar with. When starting out with altered harmony, I'd recommend printing this out and sticking it close to the piano for quick and easy reference. Whenever we come across a dominant chord in a jazz standard, if one of these tones is the melody notes, we can apply an upper structure voicing to achieve interesting harmonic colours and textures. Once we have these four formulas memorised, we can always find an interesting voicing that works well with both the melody and the underlying harmony. You will see that this one hour practice plan is split into two sections. The first 30 minutes contains six theory drills, and then the second 30 minutes should be spent manually working out upper structures using the upper structure cheat sheet. The drills and exercises covered in this practice plan will help you to visualize alterations and upper structures, and also help with our oral recognition of the alterations. For the first two drills, we're going to isolate single alterations over the major 2-5 and the major 2-5-1 progression. For the third drill, we will then introduce the minor 2-5-1, and we will explore the role of the flat 9, the sharp 9, and the sharp 5, or flat 13. It's worth noting that the sharp 5 and the flat 13 is the same note, and different musicians will refer to it differently. I prefer to call it the sharp 5, but you will hear other people say the flat 13. So understand it's just two ways of referring to the same thing. For drills four and five, we will take the four common upper structures from the cheat sheet, and we will take these around two, five, one progressions in all 12 keys. And finally, for drill six, we will explore some more advanced applications of upper structures over the minor two, five, one progression. So let's get started with practice drill one. We're going to take the major 2-5-1 progression and we're going to experiment with flat 9s and the sharp 5 or flat 13, however you want to call it. We're going to continue from where we left off in the extended voicings course, where we played the following extended 2-5-1 progression. We played 2 minor 9, so root, minor 3, 5, minor 7 and 9, and then we dropped the flat 7 which takes us to the five chord with root, flat seven, nine, three, and 13. So that's a dominant 13 voicing. And then down to the one major nine. So root, major three, five, major seven, and nine. So we took that voicing around all 12 keys. If you haven't completed this, then I'd recommend that you do that first. And so now we're going to introduce the flat nine. So notice when we take this progression to move from the two to the five chord, all that changes in our right hand is the flat seven falls by half a step. Well, if we also drop this note by a half step, we then have the flat nine over the five chord. So listen to the different character that, that adds. So, that's unaltered and then that's altered and, and into the one chord. So let's take this around all 12 keys, starting with C major, two, five, one. Just those two middle notes are falling down by a half step and then into the one. And that same pattern of the two middle notes falling is going to work in all 12 keys, as we'll see. So starting with a 2-5-1 in C major. Now a 2-5-1 in F major. So you can see there, moving from G minor 7 to C7, we have the flat 7 falling by a half step. And now we've also dropped the fifth of the two chord by a half step that gives us that flat nine and then into the one so notice as well that we have this inner voice leading so then a two five one in b flat a two five one in e flat 
two five one in A flat, a two five one in D flat, a two five one in G flat, a two five one in B. Two five one in E, a two five one in A, a two five one in D, and finally a two five one in G. An important point here is to consciously identify where the flat nine is. So let's take one of the more difficult keys. How about the two five one in B major? We have C sharp minor nine, F sharp 13 to B flat major. So when I'm working out the flat nine over this, I'd start on the two chord and I'm, I'm thinking in terms of the scale degrees. So root flat three, five, flat seven, nine. And then we know that those middle two notes are going to drop down. So that's an F sharp 13 with a flat nine. And I'd say to myself, well, here's the root, the flat seven. And the first of all, there's the essential chord tones, root, flat seven and three. And then we have the flat nine and the 13. And so it's making this conscious analysis of there's the flat nine. That's what will help us to identify these tones in future. So maybe just stop and press the flat nine, say there it is, and then that resolves into the one chord. Next we're going to play the sharp five or the flat 13, however you want to call it, and we're going to play this on its own. A nice way to isolate this, we could do root, flat three and flat seven, and then the nine on top, so essential chord tones on the nine, and then if we just drop that nine by a half step, with also with the flat seven, we then get a G seven with a sharp five or flat 13. And listen to how different that is to... So all of these alterations have a very distinctive color. And then down to the one. So let's leave the five out for now. So we're just thinking essential chord tones with the nine on top, then drop the top two notes and we have that flat 13 on top and down to the one. Let's take that around all 12 keys. So next in the key of F, C7, sharp five, F major. The key of B flat, in the key of E flat, key of A flat, in the key of D flat, in the key of G flat, in the key of B, in the key of E. of A, in the key of D, and in the key of G is the final one, now let's add these two alterations together into the same progression, and this is interesting because now we have all three notes on top falling by a half step. So that's a G7 with a flat 9 and a sharp 5. Or you might also see flat 9, flat 13. And again, listen to the difference. So just the flat 9, just the flat 13, and then both of them. Let's take that around all 12 keys.
other variation on this drill is to play them with rootless left hand voicing. So we can play a 2-5-1 in C major, D minor 9, rootless, G13, rootless, C major 9, rootless. Or we could also do flat 9, or we could do sharp 5, or we could do both. And so with the rootless voicings, remember that we always want to have them in this sweet spot of the piano. I'd always look, well, where is this voicing going to sound best? So for the C major, this, this one is in that sweet spot. For a 2-5-1 in F, I'd, I'd say here is can get a little bit thin sounding up in the top register, so I'd play it here. And then moving to a 2-5-1 in B flat. A 2 5 1 in E flat. 2 5 1 in A flat. A 2 5 1 in D flat. A 2 5 1 in G flat. A 2 5 1 in B. Two five one in E. A two five one in A. A two five one in D. And finally, a two five one in G. These exercises that I've just demonstrated to you are drills. They exist in isolation. And so the most important thing to do is to apply and experiment with these alterations in context of jazz standards. And that's when you'll really learn how to use them effectively and what kind of situations they work and what kind of situations they don't work. So let's take a couple of jazz standards. So first let's take the tune Autumn Leaves and then let's apply these alterations to the five chords. We start with a 2-5-1 in B-flat major. And notice over the F7 that I didn't play any alterations. So first of all, let's experiment with the flat 9. Sounds great, add some extra colour. Now let's try the sharp 5. You'll hear that didn't sound quite as good. The flat 9 sounds great. But the sharp 5, it doesn't work with the harmony. And so this is a process of experimentation that you'll go through. Let's do another jazz standard. Let's pick one with more two fives and two five ones, and we'll see what we can discover. Let's choose the nearness of you that has plenty of two fives and two five ones. F7 sharp five. Here's an A minor to a D7. So here we could do, if we play the flat nine down here, it's gonna sound a bit muddy, but we could do, and even put the sharp five in there. Let's just play through that again, and we're gonna play this voicing for the D7, going into the G minor. There we have a C7. We could put the flat nine in, but sometimes we don't need to put any alterations in. Sometimes just that plain old root three and flat seven sounds great. And we are grace noting there, so 
That's the sharp 11. We're going to look at that in the next practice slot. And now we have a turnaround. So A minor 7, we could play it like this. And then go into a D7. So we could do flat 9. That sounds good. And we could even put the sharp 5 in there. And that sounds really good. That's That would be my choice there. And so you can see how it's a process of experimentation. And then down to the last 2-5. I think for this one, just a flat nine. So the melody note is here. And we could add the sharp five, but my taste would be flat nine there. And then back to where the melody starts. So. Check out the lesson on that, and that's where we do some more advanced things. So that should give you some insight into the process of discovery. You know, it's one thing being able to do the drills and take it around all 12 keys, but really that stuff's useless unless you can apply it in context of jazz standards. So the point of the drills is that it allows us to visualize where those tones are. So you'll see that when I was experimenting, I can visualize where the flat nine and where the sharp five is. And so pretty much on the spot or in the moment, I can then choose whether I want to include these alterations. And that's the point where we want to get to, a point where we can choose the color, the tension, and the texture of any dominant chord we play. I hope you found this useful, and when you're ready, move on to slot two of this practice series where we look at the sharp 11 alteration.